es como si la propia escritura fuese la verdad, o as if writing itself were the truth. What we have then, to borrow Lewis's characterization, is a violation of a covenant that was never even established in the first place, a refusal to live up to an unmade demand. This double negative is further implicated or reflected in the title of the final book that is within Arasli. Inures, te seyuda, un prugo de veora. And this is, and nothing, or and nothingness. Book three, in which I try to see. Though the Catalan Nures is equivalent to the English nothing or nothingness and the Spanish nada, we'd be remiss to gloss the double negative and collapse it into simple negation. The nothingness or nada that we can read in the mediated translation must first be not nothingness or no nada. The negation is the founding condition upon which nothingness is admitted into this discourse's symbolic exchange. Not only this, but Bosch also links this notice to vision, or rather the intent to see, or the action of trying to see. This equivalence of nures, nada, and nothing or nothingness may hold up as equivalence proper, based on the founding condition of the double negative, but here again we slip up by a focus on product and not process. Deleuze and Guattari make a similar distinction between the compars and the dispars, or matter form and material forces, that I think proves critical here. For pharometric, for equivalence, is the visual or visuality, that is a manufactured sort of semblance that we have here between the three terms that I've mentioned that I have up behind me. It's because this equivalence emerges as a corrective measure, a convergence or a compars, to a faulty equivalence or an unequal distribution of weights or dispars. When we consider that the Latin pars has also given rise to words such as pars, part, even porous, such a distinction becomes even more illuminating. Lacanian psychoanalysis bases itself on, among other things, the notions of the gaze and the missed encounter. In what is perhaps the most famous, or at least one of my favorite lectures from Four Fundamental Concepts of Psychoanalysis, Lacan muses, quote, must we not distinguish between the function of the eye and that of the gaze? A small manifestation of the function to be isolated is the stain. This example is valuable in marking the pre-existence to the scene of a given to be seen. If the function of the stain is recognized in its autonomy and identified with that of the gaze, we can seek its track, its thread, its trace. We will then realize that the function of the stain and of the gaze is both that which governs the gaze most secretly and that which always escapes from the grasp of that form of vision that is satisfied with itself in imagining as conscious in imagining itself as consciousness. That in which consciousness may turn back upon itself represents mere sleight of hand, and avoidance of the function of the gaze is at work there." End quote. So this sleight of hand, the moment of suspension that represents the passage from the subjective into the objective, ends in an act. This act certainly interpolates a new subject, yet, it, yet this passage into subjectivity has been negotiated as an emergence in the field of Big Other, often represented in Lacanian algebra as objet. I know that's a very quick simplification. <laughs> we can talk about that later, but we'll just go with it for now. For Lacan, the principal objet A is that of the gaze, which of course must be distinguished from seeing the proper function of the biological eye. What Lacan seems to emphasize in this theoretical fi fiction is that the stain represents a point of encounter between these two functions. But let us delve here into the nature of objet A, for Lacan emphasizes that we are up what we are up against is not the gaze itself, but rather an avoidance of its function. Rather than attempt to introduce a development of the gaze as product, and the gaze as anchored to a specific point, either the eye itself as a biological manifestation, the symbolic objet A, or anything else we could perform sort of gymnastics around, I prefer to focus on the notion of absence as it is manifest or manifested in objet A, or what Ra Raha Enger develops as a pres absence. We can return here to our discussion of equivalence or equivalence amongst the terms nures, nada, and nothingness. I claimed earlier that the no of nures was the founding condition that allowed it into a constellation of symbolic equivalency with its Spanish and English translations, nada and nothingness. Now we might try to see this nures as parallel to the, to the Lacanian objet A, for Lacan, following the phenomenology of Merleau-Ponty, the encounter of the gaze and the eye at the stain is always and already a missed encounter. In Lacanian theory, the desire of the subject is first the desire of the big other wrapped up within the symbolic, whose absence is approximated through the objet. A. The gaze is of the real, and it is the passage of the gaze into the symbolic as the eye that the imaginary in 